Hello and welcome everyone at Career Developers. Today we are going to deal with trigonometry. Let's begin. First of all, what is trigonometry? The word trigonometry is giving you a hint here. It is trigon metron. That's the two words combined and we get the subject as trigonometry. Trigon is it's for triangle and metron is for measurement. So we are going to measure a triangle. Now, what kind of measurements do we get in a triangle? Let's see. Let us suppose there is a triangle ABC. Now, in this triangle, we can see, let's name the sides as this. The side opposite to vertex A as A, the side opposite to vertex B as B, and the side opposite to vertex C as C. Now we have a triangle ABC with this. What else do we have in a triangle? We have the angles. We have three angles here. Angle A, angle B and angle C. So in trigonometry, basically we are going to deal with the six elements of a triangle. The three angles and the three sides. This is what we deal. And only six combinations, six, uh, six terms in different combinations we are going to use and if we just master that, we will master trigonometry. Isn't that easy? Let's find out. Now, to make it even simpler, in your course you have to deal with only one type of triangle. Only one type of triangle and that happens to be a right angled triangle. Now what do we mean by a right angled triangle? A triangle in which one of the angle measures 90 degree. In this case here we have a right angled triangle and which is right angled at B. So angle B measures 90 degree. Now, as one of the angle is right angled, so this is 90 degree and these two, these two angles A and C will make 90 again because we all know that sum of all the angles in a triangle, sum of all the angles, I mean interior angles will be 180 degree. So if angle B measures 180 like we know angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degree. This is what we know as angles and property of triangle. So since we have already taken that it is a right angle triangle which is right angle at B, so what we get? Angle A plus 90 degree plus angle C equals to 180 degree. Now we can write angle A plus angle C is 180 degree minus 90 degree. So therefore we get angle A plus angle C equals to 90 degree. So now you can understand that A and C measures 90 degree and B alone measures 90 degree. So if there are two angles A and C and their measure is 90 degree then we can say clearly that A alone A alone is less than 90 and B sorry C alone angle C alone is again less than 90 now you may say that A, if C is 0 then what will happen? If C is 0 then A becomes 90 degree and there is no possibility of a triangle there. Because if you draw, let's, let's have a practical understanding to this. If B measures 90 and if A also measures 90, do you see a triangle possible here? Absolutely not because these two lines will become parallel and they will never meet and hence you will not get a triangle. So in order to have a triangle, both angles A and C 
have to be less than 90 degree. So we can call it that A angle A is acute also angle C is acute. These are two acute angled triangles. So now what we see here is we can understand many things from this. What we can understand that since angle A plus angle C equals to 90 degree, we understand that both A and C are acute. One more concept we can understand that they are complementary. Angle A plus angle C is equals to 90 degree. When and we know that complementary angles are defined as if two angles uh, measured in such a manner that, the, that their sum is 90 degree then we call it complementary. So we can say A and C are complementary to each other. That means we can write angle A as 90 minus angle C or we can also write angle C as 90 minus angle A. Now these are very important concepts which we are going to use in the later phase. So you must remember. I hope whatever discussed now is clear to you. Now what we are going to do is we are going to deal with a triangle, a right angle triangle and we will see another very important concept here that is Pythagoras theorem. Everyone must know Pythagoras theorem before understanding or before dwelling into trigonometry because this is very very important in order to understand the basics of trigonometry. So let us understand what is Pythagoras theorem and how it is applied in a right angle triangle. So let's see what some more features of the right angle triangle. See it's 90 degree. So the side opposite to the angle 90 degree is named as hypotenuse. Okay. Now there are other two sides. Now if we are observing this triangle from the point C, suppose from this we observe, then the side opposite to my point of observation, suppose my point of observation is at C, I, I keep my eye at C, then the side opposite to the point of observation in, the, in that system, in that question or in that particular problem will be considered as perpendicular. So we will name this as I want to mark one thing here that you have to focus. Like I said, if my point of observation is at C, then this side opposite to it is perpendicular. If my point of observation will be at A, then this will become perpendicular. So, perpendicular changes. It depends on the point you are observing the triangle. So, if you observe from A, the side opposite to angle C, that is AB is perpendicular and if you observe from point A, the side opposite to vertex A, that is BC, is perpendicular. And in this case, let's say our point of observation is at C, I am naming it as theta. This is another Greek letter which we will be using to represent the angles in a trigonometry. This is not mandatory. But uh, it's customary to write in this way, so we are using it and this is an introduction to a new letter as well. Now, this remains the third side as base. So this is the general understanding about a right angle triangle that in a right angle triangle, the side opposite to 90 degrees hypotenuse, the point from the, uh, the from the point of observation, the side opposite to it, we will consider it as perpendicular. And if the point of observation is A, then this will become perpendicular, obviously. But here we have considered this. So if it is hypotenuse, it is perpendicular. 
the remaining one is based on which the triangle is standing in now moving on we also term these things as this we can also name the same thing as this let me draw the triangle again let's name it the same way b a and here at c it is again right angled at b let's name this as the point of observation theta the side opposite to this will be called hypotenuse in this case as well hypotenuse and now the side from the point of observation where this angle is made is called adjacent side adjacent side and from where we are opposite the, uh, from from the point of observation where we take it as opposite is called opposite side these are just the terminologies you can understand as uh, hypotenuse perpendicular in base and we can also have a hypotenuse opposite and adjacent because here we have a confusion that if the point of observation is a then this becomes perpendicular if this is the point of observation then this becomes perpendicular but here we have one simplicity like if the point of observation becomes a then this side will become adjacent and this will become opposite right so in this triangle we have these two possibilities you have to choose the comfort of using the terminology and you can, you can use it for solving all the problems now let's come back to pythagoras theorem in pythagoras theorem it is stated that the square of the hypotenuse if i write hypotenuse square of the hypotenuse is sum of squares of other two sides the other two sides let's say perpendicular square plus the base square this is hypo this is the pythagoras theorem you need to remember that square of the hypotenuse is equal to sum of squares of other two sides which are perpendicular and base or we can also call it which are adjacent side and the opposite side this is how we consider it and since we have named it as triangle abc if i name it as for the triangle here it will be ac squared is equal to perpendicular that is ab in this case and base is bc square now this is also an important relation that we have in triangle abc if it is right angled at b you can notice that if the triangle is right angled at b the hypotenuse will make a side which will be made using the vertices a and c because it is right angled at b that angle will be missing in the hypotenuse and you will find the other two sides will have that angle which has the angle 90 degree means the word the vertex b will be there in the other two sides just for a trick you can see that which side is hypotenuse so you can see the side opposite to 90 and if you want to write the relation you can write it like this now what happens in in, in a question what what is the scenario you are going to get basically these are three quantities hypotenuse perpendicular and base what you are supposed to do in a question is you have to determine any of the side any of these terms two terms will be given somehow in a relation and one will be missing so generally if hypotenuse is not given you can use it directly but if suppose perpendicular is given and hypotenuse is given and base is not given then you have to find out base so in that case you need to modify this pythagoras theorem formula a little 
to utilize because this becomes a problem for many students so I'm trying to focus on this so we have a relation that if we have suppose hypotenuse square is equals to perpendicular square plus base square remember we can represent we can name it in multiple ways I call it side AC square, AB square or BC square or we can call it hypotenuse square as perpendicular plus base square or we can also write it as H square, P square, B square. I am using this terminology so that you can easily understand how you have to relate things. Suppose we have to find out the relation between adjacent and opposite, base and perpendicular. Then we can simply use that if base and perpendicular or adjacent and opposite are given you can directly use this but if suppose hypotenuse is given and either of the two either perpendicular or base is given then we will not use this form we will rather use suppose we need perpendicular square we will keep it on the left hand side and on right we will write a squared minus b squared so you need to remember it is positive only in case we are given to calculate the hypotenuse. Perpendicular and base are known to us. If perpendicular or base, I, or we can also call it adjacent and opposite sides are not given. In that case, you have to use the formula like this. You will always remember that x squared will be positive and we have to subtract either b or b. Suppose we have to calculate b squared, then we will write it as x squared minus b squared. This adjustment, this little adjustment of Pythagoras theorem is very crucial while solving the problem. If you cannot understand this, that this alter, uh, alteration I have to make in the formula, then it becomes difficult for you. So you have to focus on this, that this little modification I have to write. And if I if I'm writing in terms of this, then if I have to find out AC, then I can simply write AC squared as AB squared and BC squared as it was given. But if I need to find AB or BC, then I will use the formula BC squared as AC squared minus AB squared. Or if I have to find out AB, then I will write AB squared as AC squared minus BC squared. It's very simple, but if you do not remember this, it will become a little difficult for you. I hope this is clear. Moving on, we are going to deal with the trigonometrical information about triangle. Now, we are going to focus on trigonometrical ratios. Actually, in your class 10, you will only get the definitions of the six, tri six trigonometrical ratios. Let's see one of, let's each of them one by one. So again, we will have a requirement of a right angle triangle. I just quickly draw it. I consider again that it is right angled at B, A, B, C. So this side will be hypotenuse. I will just mark it with H. I am considering theta is my point of observation. So this the opposite side is this perpendicular and this becomes the base. Now we are going to see the definition of each of the six trigonometrical ratios. So I am calling it ratios because it is a ratio of two sides and we are going to relate this angle with the sides. So in, in this trigonometry we are only going to deal with the relationship of angle and sides and how they are related. Let us see the definition. First angle is, first trigonometrical ratio is sine. This is the full name sine. If I have to deal with this, then I write the short form of it, short notation. Sine of angle C, which here I am going to represent as sine of theta. Now this is defined as the ratio of perpendicular upon hypotenuse. If I define cosine, that's the full name, cosine, and we define it as cos of angle C, or we can say cos theta, it is defined as the ratio of 
base upon hypotenuse. If I define another one as tangent, that's the full name, you might have heard this in, in circles, tangent. So tangent here is in short written as tan, tan of angle C or we can also call it tan theta and it is the ratio of perpendicular upon base means opposite upon adjacent. So this is opposite on hypotenuse, this is adjacent on hypotenuse and this is perpendicular upon base. So these are the three relations and three more I am going to write on this side. This is secant. You might have heard this term also, secant. We make this caps. Secant. Its short notation is sec. Now sec of angle C, you can call it sec of theta as it is the act it is actually the exact opposite of cos so we can name it as h upon b next is cosec cosecant so cosecant in short we write as cosec of angle c we can name it as cosec theta and this is opposite or reciprocal of sine so it is h upon p and last that is cotangent like these are all the reciprocals of each other cotangent in short we write as cot of angle c you can also call it cot theta this is opposite of tangent so we can write it as B upon P. Now these are definitions. So you have to learn this relation. There is no alternative. And in order to learn this, you just need to remember a little rhyme. Small poetry if you can remember. You can remember this relation. And three you can remember and three are the opposite. You just need to memorize it a little and you can do it very easily. So it goes like this. These are written in many books and I think this is the easiest one also. Some people have some people have curly brown hair tightly Pull back. So this makes as S for sine, P for perpendicular, and H for hypotenuse. You can remember sine theta P upon H, P by H. Curly cos brown base and hair H that is for hypotenuse again. So cos theta B upon H. Tan theta P upon B, perpendicular upon base, tightly T tan pulled back, base perpendicular, relations you can understand. So if you remember this, you can remember these three relations and you can remember that sec is opposite of cos, cosecant is opposite of sine and cotangent is opposite, uh, no, that's not the right term actually, that is reciprocal, it is better to say reciprocal of each other. So sec is reciprocal of cos, cosecant is reciprocal of sine and cotangent is reciprocal of tangent. So these are the definitions you need to remember. I think it is clear. Moving on, you will see the trigonometric relations of different types. Now we are going to see some trigonometric relations. I have named it as, I have already discussed the reciprocal relation. We have another relation as quotient relation and one more we are going to deal that is square relations. So we have in trigonometry three types of relation. First is reciprocal relation and since we have already defined the terms 
let's begin. Let's see how we can understand about reciprocal relation. Like I said, sine theta is reciprocal of cosec theta. This is one relation. We can also see this same relation in terms of sine. If we can see this relation again, we can write cosec theta as 1 upon sine theta. So these are actually the same thing, but here we have kept sine theta and we have written cos theta, cosec theta in denominator and here we have written sine theta in the denominator, writing it in reciprocal way. We can also conclude one more relation from this as that cosec theta into sine theta as 1. If this goes to this side, cross multiplication, you get cosec theta into sine theta as 1. Now, this is really very important to know. Why? Because when you will be dealing, the, dealing with the questions in trigonometry, especially the trigonometric identities, what you will notice that these any of these three relations, the question will have these things in a hidden manner. You have to find this out from the question. Once you start seeing these relations into the question, inside a question, you will find that dealing with trigonometry becomes quite easy. So you just need to find these formulas and relations inside a question. Once you start seeing them, it becomes easy. We'll give you more tips how to do, do the questions, how to actually solve the trigonometric identities. But for now, you need to look for these kind of relations when you are trying to solve a trigonometric question or trigonometric identity. Again, this is about sine. Likewise, we have a relation of sec and cosec. So, I am writing cos theta. Cos theta is reciprocal of sec theta. We can also write it as sec theta is reciprocal of cos theta. And we can also write it the same relation, the product relation as, as we have written here as sec theta into cos theta equals 1. You have to look for this relation as well. Another is with tan and cot. So we know that tan of theta is reciprocal of cot theta. We can also write it as cot theta as reciprocal of tan theta. Or we can write the same thing as product cot theta into tan theta as 1. These are the reciprocal relations. These are the three reciprocal relations that we get with the trigonometrical ratios sine cos and tan. I think this is clear. Now we are going to see about quotient relations. Now quotient relations are only possible in case of tan theta. Now what is quotient relation? Just have a look and I will tell you also how it comes. So tan theta is actually sine theta upon cos theta. This is the reciprocal relation of tan, sorry, quotient relation of tan and we also have quotient relation of cot as cot theta is cos theta upon sin theta. Well, the proof of these things are not required. Just for fun we can have, like we can write tan theta upon the side ratio. Some people have curly brown hair tightly pulled back, pulled back. So we can write tan theta as P upon B. So if it is there, we can also write that Let's divide the numerator and denominator by hypotenuse. So I divide P by H and we also divide B by H. Now what we get? P by H. Some people have, people have, that is sine. So we can write this relation as sine theta and B by H we can write as cos theta. And this is how we get the quotient relation of tan and cot. Similarly, Tan I have already done, cot you can try yourself. That is quotient relation. I hope it is clear to you.
Moving on, we are going to see squared relations. Now, what is a squared relation? Square relations. In square relations, actually, I'll just draw the triangle once again so that you can have a proof of it very clear to you. Let's name it B, this is A, this is C. This is right angle at B, so it is 90 degree. Side opposite to 90 is hypotenuse. If I see theta as my point of observation, this is opposite or perpendicular. So this is P, this is adjacent or base. So we have the triangle like this. Now, in square relation, you already have by Pythagoras theorem that Let's use the trigonometrical identities first. Trigonometrical ratios first. Sine theta, if we define, we can write in terms of side as perpendicular upon hypotenuse, opposite upon hypotenuse. So it is P by H. So P by H, what is P side? AB. So I can write P by H, or we can also write AB upon AC. If I write cos theta, cos theta is B by H. Or I can write base that is BC upon hypotenuse that is H. So that is AC. Yeah. Now, if I see the square relation between sine and cos, it comes like this. If I just do that, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, what do we get? Sin theta is AB upon AC, so we can write AB upon AC squared plus cos square theta, I can write BC upon AC squared. And what do we get? We get it as AB squared upon AC squared. Here I can write BC squared upon AC squared. Now again you can see, since the denominators are same, I can write AC squared, AB squared plus BC squared. Again, that Pythagoras theorem, the AB squared and BC squared, the hypotenuse AC squared is sum of the other two sides, sum of the squares of the other two sides, so this is AB and BC. So instead of AB and BC, I can simply write AC squared and upon AC squared, if we just get cancelled, we get 1. So ultimately what we are getting, we are getting the square relation as sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is 1. This is the square relation of trigonometrical ratios. We can have some more relations from this. Let's call it equation 1. If I want to derive the other two identities or other two relations from this, we can do it like this. What we do now, let's divide equation 1 by sine squared theta. What do we get? We get now we get sine squared theta upon sine squared theta plus cos squared theta upon we have divided it by we have divided it by sine squared theta. So it will be sine squared theta. Again we have 1 upon sine squared theta. I think this is clear to you. If I will just lack of space here, but I'll just finish it. We'll have no difficulty understanding. Sine square upon sine square is one. This is cancelled. One one. So it's one. And cos upon uh, cos upon sine square. Cos upon sine. We just did the quotient relation where we said cos theta upon sine theta is cot theta. So since it is sine squared, cos squared by sine squared, it will be cot squared. 
so we can write it as cos by sin as cot squared and 1 by sin we can have the reciprocal relation as cosec squared theta so what we get here as a trigonometric relation again square relation we get that cosec square theta plus cot cosec square theta is 1 plus cot square theta and how we have obtained we have obtained it from this first square relation if I, if I make some changes here we can get the other relation which is with tan how do we get that we just need to make certain connection I think this is done for you if you want to know you can go back to the video and write it down and just make certain changes here and you can get the other relation let's see now divide equation 1 by not sine let's divide by cos squared if I divide by cos square theta what do I get I get sine square theta upon cos square theta plus cos square theta upon cos square theta is 1 upon cos square theta now you get sine upon cos so sine the quotient relation sine theta upon cos theta is tan theta so if it is squared we can write tan squared theta plus 1 cos upon cos get cancelled we get 1 equals to 1 by cos we get the reciprocal relation as sec squared theta this is another square relation we can have in terms of uh, tan and sec so these are the three things we need to remember as trigonometric uh, square relations if you know this now i'll tell you the variations in this as well because that you need to see like i said in pythagoras theorem we have variations here also these three identities uh, just now we dealt with these also require certain variations because you need to see it in the question once you understand how to see that in question you will find it is easy to solve because it will not be uh, uh, always like this so there will be some changes which we will see just now let's look at the variations in the formula that you need to understand and see while solving the question Like the first relation I wrote, I wrote is uh, sin squared theta plus cos squared theta as 1. But this is not, this is the standard form, but you will not get the standards always. So you can also modify this formula and remember as sin squared theta as 1 minus cos squared theta so what we have done is we have just taken cos squared theta and transpose, transpose it to the other side of the equality and we got this so this relation or we can also put this on the other side and we can get cos squared theta as 1 minus sin squared theta so in a question if you see this well and good but if you see this also that then you should be very comfortable because it has come from this relation and when you see this you should immediately get a click from your uh, concepts and ideas that okay 1 minus cos okay it's sin square theta and if you see 1 minus sin square you should see cos square theta you must see this once you do that you will find the question solving will become easy for you next is if I have the relation 1 plus tan square theta as sec squared theta so we can write it as the other form it would be that sec squared theta minus tan squared theta is equals to 1 this relation you can also see or you can also see that sec squared theta minus 1 is tan squared theta so if any of the relation you see in the question you immediately know that this relation is applied and there is slight modification in this way or this way you should be quickly uh, getting it and just get hold of the question one more that we have that 
So that's very simple. One plus cot square theta as cosec square theta. So we can modify it as cosec square theta minus cot square theta as one, or we can also see it in this form that cosec square theta minus one is equals to cot square theta. So these are the relations you need to see. This one right here, right here, this one, this is standard, this. So when the slight variations come, you should get comfortable with it. Once you become comfortable with these identities or this relationship, you will get a hold of question quite easily. Now we have some more trigonometric relations or trigonometric ratios with complementary angles. So we'll have that. Like it is sine theta, we can write it as cos of 90 minus theta. Now remember, in the beginning of the class, I told you that in a right angle triangle, let's say it is right angle at B, this is A, this is C, this is theta, this is uh, opposite side perpendicular, this is 90, opposite side hypotenuse, this is base. Now in this, you can see, this angle is 90 degree, this is theta, so this one automatically becomes 90 minus theta, the remaining angle, because these two angles sum, is again 90, so this will be 90 minus theta. Now you see, if I write sin theta, what will be the, the side? It is uh, theta opposite to this is perpendicular upon hypotenuse, right? Suppose if I take cos of this angle, cos of 90 minus theta angle, what do I get? So if this is my point of observation, this becomes opposite, so this acts as base. So I will have to write as this as base, so now base or we can also call it adjacent, adjacent upon this. So we have, instead of P by H, I should write it in terms of sides, so it's AB upon AC. And here it is B by H to remember, if I write it in terms of side, it becomes again AB by AC. Why? Because if it is angle A, side opposite to it is this, so this becomes the opposite or perpendicular and this acts as base when the point of observation is at A. So that's what is the change you need to remember. Now you see, sin 90 minus, uh, cos 90 minus theta and sin theta have same ratio, AB upon AC. AB upon AC. So we can write sin theta as cos 90 minus theta. These are complementary angle relations uh, that we have to deal with in trigonometry. So likewise, you can understand here as cos theta has a reciprocal relation with sin. We can say sin 90 minus theta. We have sec and cosec in relation. So sec is cosec 90 minus theta and cosec we can write as sec cosec theta as sec 90 minus theta with tan and cot we have tan theta is cot 90 minus theta and we have cot theta as tan 90 minus theta. So these are the trigonometric, complementary trigonometric relations that we have in case of these defined trigonometrical ratios. Again, we have trigonometric ratios for certain fixed angles. So that quickly we can see that trigonometric. Okay, now we are going to see the trigonometric ratios at fixed angles. So here I am representing the angles as theta which will be 0 degree 
30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degrees and 90 degrees. And here I name the relations as sine, cos and tan. Let's do with the 3 and the other 3 will come naturally to us because they are reciprocal. So sine of theta, let's say theta is 0 degree, then sine 0 value is 0. How do we obtain that first? I'll just write a quick number. 1, 2, 3 and 4. Because these are going up to 4, there is no logic behind it. Let's divide all of them by 4. And let's take the square root of each one of these. What do we get? 0 upon 4, it becomes 0. 1 upon 4, it becomes 1. Square root of 4 is 2, so it's 1 by 2. So this 2, 1 is a 2, 2, 2 is are 4. We can write it as 1 upon 2. Here, we can see that this will be under root 3. Square root of 4 is 2, so we get 3 by 2. And this 4, 4 cancel, 1, so we get 1. This is a way to, this is a hack to remember this. If you can remember it directly, no problem. So this is what we get. I can directly write it here for you. Doing some questions, you will remember this. No issues at all. 0 degree is 0. At 30, it is 1 by 2. At 45, it is 1 upon root 2. It is root 3 by 2. And this is 1. Now, if you try to remember it with your left hand, you can remember this as 0, 1 by 2. This is 1 by root 2, root 3 by 2 and 1. This is how we can do it. And this is how, when you see it, your palm side, this is 0, 1 by 2, 1 by root 2, root 3 by 2 and 1. Now, for cos, you just need to reverse it. Now, put it in the reverse order. So, now cos 0 becomes 1. This is root 3 by 2. This is in the middle, so it remains the same, 1 by root 2. This becomes 1 by 2 and this becomes 0. And if we have to find out the tan, we can take the ratio of sine and cos because these are the quotient relations. 0 upon 1 will be 0, so we have 0. If you take the ratio of these two, like these two can cancel and we have 1 upon root 3. And if I just cancel it here, these are the same thing. So if I just get the ratio, both get cancelled and we get as 1. And if I take this here, 2 gets cancelled, we have root 3. And it's 1 upon 0, it's infinity or we can call it not defined. We do not have any value of tan theta at 90 degrees. Not defined. This is not defined. So these are the trigonometric ratios and special angles that you need to remember. Well, I'm not dealing with the questions now because we are dealing with the concept. Once we are done with this, we are going to start solving the questions of NCERT one by one for you so that you can have good command over it. For now, we wrap the video today and welcome uh, you all for the next video. Please come back and visit and see how to do, how to deal with the questions. Thanks for watching. Keep learning.